Hi, welcome to Jack's Garage Workshop. Uh, this video is about my Honda tracked pedestrian walk behind dump truck. Um, it was bought at an auction for my own use to avoid renting one for ages, but did need a little bit of work, uh, just a few little jobs on it, and also it'll add a bit of value at the end if those jobs are all done. Um, so this video is about me uh, doing a few minor repairs to it. Thanks for watching. So here is the Honda TD500 HL. It's not Tabba Diesel. It's a track dumper, uh, 500 kilo lift, and HL means it's a high lift. There we go. Um, I've just bought this to do some work, and it does need a bit of repairs. It's come from an auction. Uh, so main issue is these are the controls that you pull. They break the tracks, and then that turns it. Um, they are useless. Clutch cable snapped on this side. Snapped up in there, it's meant to look a bit more like that. Although this handle is actually broken as well. Uh, this was a bit bent, I've straightened that out. This is meant to be the accelerator, or the throttle, shall I say. And it's seized. Pulled that off, it's completely seized inside. So what have we got? Presents! New bits, a couple of new handles, new grips, new throttle cable, and for some reason I've got two clutch cables. I'm not sure if they come as a pair or if they sent two by mistake, but I've got two. Um, not really the genuine parts. They weren't actually much more expensive than aftermarket for this. Uh, so first challenge, I'm gonna do the, the most important one is this clutch cable, because at the moment you can only steer right Brilliant. Um, now, I've looked at where this goes. Unfortunately, it goes down here. Down the back of this pole. Into the machine down, down there somewhere. And then it just disappears in there. <coughs> and I have no idea how to get in there. Um, this is all stoved in. So I'd say this needs straightening out. So I would take this off. But to get that off, it would have to come over the pump. I really don't want to be messing with all the hydraulic hoses. That seems ridiculous. So what I'm going to have a look at is see if this plate comes off and I can get up to the clutch mechanism there. Hopefully just yank the cables out. I'm going to do both things. I'm going to swap these handles. Got new grips to go on as well. They were all torn up, so I just pulled them off. Uh, and then I'm going to do this last. Now, something that I did notice with this when I picked it up from the auction, it started and ran fine on choke. You took it off choke, it still. So I think the uh, main jet and the carburetor is probably blocked or similar. So I'm gonna take the carburetor off and clean it. It's a Honda GX160 engine. I'll show you that. Pull start, standard GX160. I'll take the carb off. I'll show you taking the carb off, but I won't video dismantling it. I don't think there's probably a thousand videos of people stripping a GX160 carb. Uh, it just needs to clean out, really. I've had a look at the air filter, it's not too bad. I'm not gonna bother servicing it at the moment, it does run fine. Uh, although while it's apart, there is a possibility I'll do the oil in it just because I'm gonna be working right there. So, let's go. cables. If they go up there, let's hope if we disconnect it, we can just pull them out. But otherwise, that's going to be a nightmare. Where do they go? Up there somewhere. Watch a ball like. Oh. Twisted and broken. And now you 
can see why we're replacing it. Awful. Machine. Right, that's not coming out because I haven't taken the other end off. I was just trying to make myself feel better by getting something off. That's not going to happen. I'm going to have to free up the bottom. Balls. Of course, what they've done is the pins been put through that way so the split pin is on the top. And I can't get to it. So either I take this one off and pull the whole arm off. Right, I have to fight round in this little gap. Try and get the legs of the split pin to straighten up. Okay, well, uh, He's tempted to put, I'm probably going to put his back in the other way up anyway. There we go. Ah. And we're off. Hmm. The other one looks shinier. In fact, let me show you this. Tire clutch operating assembly on that side is new. Doesn't look old at all. I think best left well alone. Here's the new one. And then we're opening it. It is just a push in ferrule wheel. Ferrule wheel? Goes in there somewhere, but I need to make sure it ends up in the right place. There's a bugger because it seems to be at an angle. So they don't make this easy, do they? So they don't make it easy. I'm going to do this bolt. This one. See what happens. Here it is. Broken one. So it had to come out downwards. Which means that the new one has to go in upwards. Split that down. And then have a big fight with it. They have not made this easy. No user serviceable parts inside, they should say. Because that's what they intended. Right, so feed this up. Actually, there's no guides or anything for it. It just has to go through. There we go. Pushing it up to the handle there. It literally just has to slip through a hole in the body. rubber protective sleeve on it before it goes through the body. And then that ferrule, where, however you say that, ferrule, is clamped in place by a little, little bracket here. I can't really see what I'm doing there. If I pull it up, put it over and put it back, it stops. So I think that's it being locked in place. I need to rotate that round. And, uh, hmm. I need to look at that. Right, time for the world's most useful invention. The mirror with a light on it. Fits really neatly. Right, I think I need to do that up. And then push the cable in. Okay, all right. Sure, this makes so much more sense when you're looking at it without this on. That's the actual chassis of the machine. It would have been an absolute nightmare to get any more access than this. 
tweak that up. Here's the mirror of miracles. Looks about right. Let's see if we can push the outer down. Well, it's in. I put I put the split pin in the same way because it must be there for a reason. Uh, so there is the little, little bracket that was causing me all the problems. And there's the end of the cable sitting in there. Lovely. It comes up here. Needs a cable tie on it. So I have to check the adjustment on this, uh, but at the moment, that looks good. And coming down here, I've got a little bit of slack in the cable, which is what we want. Let's put the other side back now, that side's even more twisted and bent. Let's fix that. Let's squeeze these back together. They're just not in the right place, basically. cable. You know, I, I loosened that off, but I don't know how that comes out of there. It sits in there like that. It doesn't come out that readily. And twist it out. No. I might have to undo that nut. Uh, maybe it won't hurt anything just to undo it completely. Oh, ah, move the thing. Yeah. It's out there.
this new cable. And then this end. I think we start with this end. That'll sit nicely into the engine end first. Sorry, that focused on that. So that's, that's how that works. Put that in there. Put that in there. And run that. Right. I think that way. Round there. Round there. Up to there. Let's set that. So that we can just slip this in. And. That's starting to look bent, isn't it? That's starting to look like that's not meant to be that shape. Because actually, does that make any sense? I thought it did. I don't think it does. I think that's bent. Let's straighten it. Yeah, that's definitely not right, is it? Try a pair of pliers. Most of the steel on this has been fairly soft. <coughs> Too much. Yeah. That looked like it makes more sense. Yeah, definitely. Well, that. much of a range of motion but it does appear to be the entire range of motion that's as far as that plate can move and that's as far as it can move because of the screw to whip the carburetor off it is just this nut and this nut and then it slides off so i'll take these off and then i'll show you what it looks like underneath Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you could get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best So treat the worst of times just like a test if only I could go back in time I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can help you feel alive Find a passion, take some action, and with a little time Just be patient, make a statement, try to enjoy your life They'll try to kick you while you're down they wanna rise up while you drown They wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless I can see that they compare I think everyone's against me Maybe something in the air Am I paranoid? I swear a void is forming And they're scared I walk a straight path Not many can say that I'd like to play fast Cross me and there's payback You better pray that I don't see your face at Any place that I go I know you And then there's one bolt Goes through there It's a nut there's that one bolt there, holds this plastic housing still. 
and then two notes. Last job I haven't finished. Bear in mind the first bit of this video, it was almost midnight. Nothing more. Split pin, split pin. Right. Split pins are in the handles. Let's see what we've got. On, fuel's on, chokes on. Let's try it with nothing. Oh, they're so tight. I'm thinking that's probably fine. Right. Nah, back on this. Belt was knackered on it. I'll try f I can't find the old belt to show you. Uh, one moment, let's go look for it. And I'm back. Couldn't find the old belt. But, uh, never mind. It, it doesn't matter. Basically, it was a belt. It was still working when I noticed it was all broken. Um, right, all I'm going to do is I have, didn't video taking it apart. Uh, we're just going to put it back together. I've got a new belt. <laughs> well, story behind that. I've got a new belt. This was exactly the same belt that was on it, a Bando Red S2 SB27. And I thought, oh, 27 inches. So I cut the old one, measured it, put it against a ruler, it's 27 ish inches. I thought, oh, yeah, it's 27, maybe stretched a bit, bang it on there. I ordered an agricultural belt. These are nice belts, these. Right, let's, uh, let's show you what happened. This is how many mistakes I made. A genuine belt from Honda, same thing, uh, or from a uh, parts supplier anyway, listed as genuine. It was like 40 quid plus, plus fat plus delivery, madness. So I thought, ah, oh, I'll buy a 27 inch belt. So I bought this one, a 5L300K, which on the website was listed as 5L300K-27. Didn't read it, did it in a hurry. Thought, ah, 27, yeah, brilliant. No, it's bigger, that's too big, that's 30 inches they're good so i thought oh gone wrong there i'll buy one that's a 27 a 5l 270k lovely it was too small because i bought a 5l belt it's a little bit deeper than the original belt and it was couldn't get it on by 28 then that'll solve it 5l 
28k. Lovely Kevlar belts, these. This one looks minging because I've had oily hands on it. I'm trying to wedge it on there. Wedged it on there. Too tight. Clutch didn't work. There's the clutch mechanism. Clutch mechanism's here. Just pushes the belt in. Clutch mechanism. Just It was just permanently engaged. It was slipping, but it was just getting hot. So, uh, yeah. My fault. Idiot. Ended up having to pay just as much. Buying four belts. <coughs> Excuse me. As I would have done buying the right one in the first place. Even a genuine one. One of the uh, parts supplies. Never mind. Force that on. Oh, not over that. Oh dear. As you can see how it works, effectively that will slip, or will not, hopefully. Yeah, lovely, <laughs> look at that, lovely bit of slippage. That should loosen up anyway, yeah, it slips. Um, I know one of the fan blades is missing, was already missing, it does me a favour, because uh, it was easy to get the belt on, as you just saw me sort of wind it on there. Here's the cover, uh, cut to me, straightening the cover. Loosened this off just like a little, just keeps the belt in place. I think it possibly adds a little bit of tension, a uh, little bit of tension on it, same as that pin, to try and hold the belt still so that it does slip. Don't quote me on that, I'm not entirely sure. So, give that a tweak. Back on. Uh, and the hydraulic pump. Firstly, it has this drive. It's not quite a flexible drive, but it does add a little bit of wiggle to the drive. Goes on. And then the pump itself. It's got that, I'm not going to turn it because it'll squirt all over that me. That hooks over. And goes straight up. That's held on with three bolts, which hopefully are on the inside of the bracket. Pretty can't see me doing them up, sorry. One over the bracket. Okay. That looks like that turns. I'm probably going to get oil everywhere doing this. So I'll just look down the side this way, and I can see, and let's bring you in there. Look at that drive is at an angle, pointing slightly downhill this end. I'm not exactly happy about that. Okay, right. So that actually rather implies as well that this was in the wrong place to begin with, because it's not where it was originally. But that looks better. And if it looks right, it probably is right. What just happened there? Oh no, you haven't laughed. Barely put any pressure on that, and it's ripped the threads out of the block. Yeah, okay. So actually, looking in there, I think we can get away with this. Looking in there, it's just ripped out the first five threads because that's all it engages with. It's loads more thread. I wonder if I go and get a longer bolt, a good 10 mil longer than that. Re engage those threads. 
in a jiffy. Why have you got so many bolts, everyone says? Why do you need them all? So I'm gonna find them quickly. Let's try that. I don't know if it's gonna snug up. Hopefully it will. Hmm, I didn't put enough pressure on that to strip that myself. I think that was damaged before. So it's squashed the spring washer there. I think that's snugged up. That's good. Well, bad, but easily solved. Um, uh, tries to work in. There's no more parts of that. Got this cover back on. Professionally straightened. Maybe we'll just call it straightened. Uh, that hold on with one, two, three. Four, five bolts. That's good because I thought it was five and there was six sitting on the bench. I think one's off of something else. One side. There we go. Maneuver that on. Oh. Kind of like most GX160 engines, little. Just like one most watch on 60 engines, they're little 10 mil head bolts. Hold that cover on. These ones in. That one. That'd be a knob. Well, whoever straightened that didn't do a very really good job, did they? Covers a bit bowed. Oh, it's been fettled and uh, doesn't, doesn't really want to go on. Oh. Ratchet spanner. That is. Sure. Um, I'm Like it could come out of there quite comfortably if I can 
physically get it there. Let's try that. Yeah, I don't think any of this is resiliently mounted, so I'm gonna go anyway. That seems about right. May give these a final tighten with the right size spanner because you know, no one likes adjustables. I don't find them too bad for hydraulic hoses because I can give them the little nip and they're kind of done. <coughs> so I can I'll pull that away a bit. Get back up and might hold that away from there. If you're going to do this when you undo them, counter hold the fitting in the pump with another spanner uh, and do them together. Uh, because if you don't, you'll unscrew the fitting from the pump. Right, back up. And we'll start up and see if that works. Better do. The sound is. What we're looking for is when I start it, we want a flat fan. Stay still. Three belts, brilliant. Uh, all got grubby, just fitting them and handling them. My fault, obviously, I'm an idiot. Uh, so they're wasted. I also paid first class delivery for two of them to get them quickly, so I could have this running a week ago. I paid second class postage for this last one, thinking this is getting ridiculous, but it's okay, it'll be the right belt. Do you know why it went wrong? Because I'm an idiot. Let's check this belt, I'll show you. I saw this belt. No markings, I thought, so I wiped it down. I saw that it said on it, really faintly, where's it gone? It says SB27. Tried searching for SB27 belt, could only find links in America to similar machines, but American parts, suppliers and things. No other markings on this belt, I thought. Absolutely no other markings. How am I ever going to identify the manufacturer? Um, the answer was quite simple. Hold it in the sun, and in the sun, it says Bando Red S2 SB27. Googled that. That belt was 14 quid with next day DPD courier delivery. But I didn't save any money because of those. Oh well, got a special place for these. It's not the bin. Don't be silly. It's the drawer of shame. You've all got one. I'm sure you've got one. Oh look. Spare belts. Brilliant. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Um, I am new to YouTube and talking about what I'm doing as I work. Uh, it's quite new to me, so I'm still getting used to that and reacting into it. Um, put a comment below if you liked it, if you didn't like it. Let me know what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. Um, I will be doing more videos, uh, so subscribe and it will let you know when I upload the next one. I've got a few other projects that the videos have got to be uploaded for. Um, 
uh, press that like button below as well so I know which videos people actually liked and which ones they don't. Uh, have a great day and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.